subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon to never miss any update. Hello everyone. So I'm here with you for lesson 1.2 SSC CGL tier 2 paper discussion quantity ability 30th November paper and I will be discussing question number 311 to 320 will be presented by me. Let's read out question number 11. It says a canal of a village can be cleared by 24 villagers in 12 days. The number of days in which 36 villagers can clear the canal is. Now you all must be knowing the concept of men days. The men days are equal if we talk about the same work. So it's simply 24 times 12 is equal to 36 times, you know, number of days you have to calculate. D, I'm writing it. Simplify, you are going to get D is equal to 8. But was it really required to solve like that? No. One thing is very much certain here that if you increase number of men, if number of villagers are increasing, the number of days required will be lesser. And if number of days required will be lesser, the answer will be less than 12 days. It has to be 8 days then because none of the other answer is less than 12. You can directly mark it 8. Same work, more people, less number of days will be required. Isn't it a common sense? Yes, pure common sense, 8 becomes right. Question number 12, A and B can do a piece of work in 18 days, B and C can do it in 24 days, A and C can do it in 36 days, we have to find. Working together, they can do the work in how many days? So one thing is definitely certain, all of you please, which answer is not possible? Develop this kind of thinking, at least you know you are sure that this is not possible. 18, 24, 36 days, that means when they, they are combined, they are working, it is definitely going to take less than 18 days. If A and B together can do a work in 18 days, if you have another num member C, it will be completed in less than 18 days. I'm just telling you a way to reject few options. Although rejecting it won't give you the answer. We need to solve it here, but no problem. Let's see how you can do it. Now I'll assume of 18, 24 and 36 is clearly 72. So let's assume our work unit to be 72 units. And then A and B you can clearly write, you know, you, you can write that is going to give you four, B and C is going to give you 3, A and C will give you 2 and now if you sum it out you are going to get A plus B plus C twice and that will be equal to 9. So A plus B plus C is going to be equal to 9 by 2. That means what if A and B, C, A, B, C are combined it is simply going to be 4.5 units per day. There are 72 units to be done right. It's very simple. It is going to be 16 days. Question number 13. Ramesh and Rahman can do a piece of work in 20 and 25 days respectively. After doing collectively 10 days of the work, collectively, they leave the work due to illness and Suresh, third person is coming and completing the rest of the work in 3 days. It is asking how many days Suresh alone can take to complete the whole work. Can be done very easily, right? Let's see how. Now, clearly you see, this is 20 days. Ramesh can complete the work in 20 days. He is working for 10 days. He will complete how much work? 50%. Half the work he will complete. Or in other way, you can say in one day it does 5%. In one day it does 4% because total work will be 100%, right? So 5% and 4% you can call it. Then you can sum it. If they are working together in one day, they are going to get 9% work. So in 10 days, total work will be 90%. This is also one of the way of writing it. Rather than writing it separately, you can write like this directly. So 90% work has been completed by Ramesh and Rahman. Who is doing the remaining work? Suresh. So Suresh is completing 10% work in 3 days. We want to know that when he will complete the work, you know, if he is working alone. That means 100% work. He will take 30 days. To complete 10% he took 3 days, to complete 100% he will require 30 days. You can easily mark it without any problem. Question number 14. A can do as much work in 4 days as B can do in 5. And B can do as much work in 6 days as C in 7. So relationship between the time taken by A and B to complete the work has been given. Similarly B and C has been given. In what time? C, do a piece of work which A can do in a week. Now we have to find a relationship between C and A. There are n number of ways of doing this particular question, right? But I'm going to tell you the smartest way of solving it. What we know, we know is that there is a particular work. So the time ratio, if I write the time ratio, there is a, there is a particular work which A can do in four day, 
I mean, A completes the work in four days and B does the same work in five days. That's the ratio of the time that is given between A and B. And here it is given that B does the same work, whatever B does in six days, C does in seven days. That's what has been provided. Now the comparison is between A and C, the time ratio comparison is between A and C. I'm going to ask you a very simple question here. The only thing is that if I can make this be same, I can have a ratio between A and C as well. What I need to do for that? Just you need to make this particular value 5. If you make this particular value 5, you are going to get a value that is going to be 35 by 6 on this side. You just convert, make it 5, it will be 35 by 6, which is approximately 6. That means approximately whatever B does in 5 days, C does in 6 days. Now ratio between A and C can be easily thought to be 4 ratio 6. So you can clearly see it is how much, how many times, approximately 1.5 times. That's it. The question is actually over. Few, some of the options can be, you know, easily rejected initially as well. Because you, you can clearly see if C, whatever work A does in a week, how much time C will take. C will definitely take more time. By reading a statement, first you can easily identify that, you know, efficiency of A is highest. So if efficiency is the highest, he will take the least, least time. Right? That, that was certain. <clears throat> so we wanted to know if a is doing some work in seven days how much c will take it will definitely take more than seven days therefore these two options were not at all possible it, it can be rejected initially now the question is one or four it is simply one the reason is you can clearly see it is 1.5 times so if 1.5 times mean whatever a does in seven days you need to multiply it by 1.5 you are roughly going to get 10.5 roughly so that's why 10.5 means only one is possible because fourth option is 12 point something. Who cares? Easy or not? How simply you can do it? By reading this statement, only you can mark the answer. A4, 5, I'm converting then this 6 into 5, making it approximately 6. So if this is 5, now I can compare A and C directly that if A take 4 days, C takes 6 days, 1.5 times, right? So if it takes 7 days, 1.5 times will be roughly 10.5 and that's how 10 point something will be the answer only a is one is possible isn't it smart use the option and get the answer directly question number 15 a can do a piece of work in 10 days and b can do it in 12 days they work together for three days then b leaves and a alone continues after two days c joins and the work is completed in two more days it is asking in how many days c can do if he works alone right so let's let's I'm going to give you a timeline that helps you out and will help you out in getting the answer very easily. So the three days it is given that A and B both are working right for three days. Then B is leaving and A alone continues. So A alone continues and it is given that for further two days only A has worked and two days after C has also joined. That means here A plus C is working and the work was completed in two more days. So I'm writing this. Now what, what it is asking in how many days C can do it if he's going to work alone. That's the question. It can be done very simply. If you clearly see in this scenario that for all the seven days, A has worked for all the seven days. So A completes a work in 10 days, right? Efficiency is 10% per day. If he's working for seven days throughout, so he alone, his own contribution in the work will be 70% clearly. Now B has worked for how many days? B has worked for three days, then he left. B worked for three days, he completes the work in 12 days. He's working for three days means one fourth time. He will be completing one fourth work. He completes the entire work in 12 days. He's working for three days, one fourth time, one fourth work. So overall you can clearly see that 95% work has been completed by A and B. The contribution of A is 70, contribution of B is 25, overall 95% work. Remaining 5% work, who is doing that? C. In how many days? 2 days. So if C does 5% work in 2 days, 10% work will be 4 days, 100% work will be how many days? 40 days. That's how you can mark it directly. If C does 5% work in 2 days, 100% work will be definitely done in 40 days. That's it. Over. You can do it that way, right? Timeline is helping out in getting that. Otherwise, I don't know. You may be taking much amount of time for doing this. If you solve this way, just make a timeline. If you if you cannot make it mentally on the piece of paper, just make a timeline. Then you need not to write anything else. You can do it orally. So simple calculations, right? 
क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्सटीन द रेशियो ऑफ द अमाउंट ऑफ वर्क डन बाय एक्स माइनस वन लेबर्स इन एक्स प्लस वन डेज एंड डन बाय एक्स प्लस वन लेबर्स इन एक्स प्लस टू डेज इज फाइव रेशियो सिक्स देन व्हाट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स दे आर आस्किंग राइट सो व्हाट इज द अमाउंट ऑफ वर्क इज सिंपली द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ मेन डेज ये इट इज लेबर डेज सो अमाउंट ऑफ द वर्क डन बाय एक्स माइनस वन लेबर्स इन एक्स प्लस वन डेज दिस विल बी द प्रोडक्ट एक्स प्लस वन लेबर्स इन एक्स प्लस टू डेज दिस विल बी द प्रोडक्ट एंड दिस रेशियो इज गिवन टू बी फाइव रेशियो सिक्स You can clearly see this is cancelled out. You are left with x minus one and x plus two. There are two ways of getting the answer. One is putting the options and checking it. The second option is cross multiplication. The third option that I am going to tell you. You can clearly see here the numerator and denominator are having a difference of three. So if numerator and denominator are having a difference of three, you just make this difference three here. Make the difference three here. It is a difference of one only. Let's make it three. Multiply by three. It will become 15 by. Now just check what is x? 16. That becomes the answer, right? Story over. Very simple question. Question number 17. A bookseller allowed 10% discount on printed price. He gets 30% commission from publisher. His profit in percent will be. Simply look. This 30% commission means what? Commission means the discount he has got, you know, in buying while buying. So if the cost is 100 rupees, the MRP is 100 rupees. Maybe you can assume or the cost. Then what? 30% commission he is getting so the cost price for him will be 30% commission you can use it will be 70 rupees right so that's the cost price and what's the selling price 10% discount on the printed price so it's a 10% here so if this is a 10% discount you can clearly write this to be 90 what do you find that is something is having cost price 70 and selling price 90 what is the profit you have any problem it will be 2 by 7 20 rupees is the profit right so 20 rupees is the profit so what it is 20 rupees by 70 rupees in fraction terms you call it 2 by 7 in percentage term it will be 28 4 by 7 and that is the answer just you identify it question number 18 a dealer is selling an article at a discount of 5% on the mark price if the mark price is 12% above the cost price and the article was sold for rupees 532 then what is the cost price that's what they are asking Very simple question, right? There is a MRP given, and five percent is the discount on that, and the mark price is twelve percent above the cost price. So I'm going to assume the cost price to be hundred. So if you assume the cost price to be hundred, and why I'm assuming cost price to be hundred? Because ultimately I have to cal calculate the cost price only. So although I'm assuming a wrong cost price, okay, because none of the answer is given to be five hundred, right? Hundred means I mean. So, so I'm not, I'm not caring about that. I'm just assuming hundred. Whatever correction will be required, I will do it later. You can see it. So, if this particular value is given to be hundred, twelve percent is the, is the market price. So, market price is applied over cost price. So, this particular value become hundred and twelve. Now, what is given? A five percent discount is given on market price. That means on this particular value, you are going to give a five percent discount. How to calculate five percent easily here? Ten percent will be eleven point two. Five percent will be half of it. That is five point six. All right, that is the discount you are going to give. The, now the simplest thing that you have to see here, if you give a five point six discount here, so what is the value at which you are going to sell it? So that will be one zero six point four. This is the value at which you are going to sell it. You can clearly see the selling price in this case when I assumed my cost price, I got it to be one zero six point four. But this is not right. According to our question, this particular value is how much? Five hundred and thirty two. That means what? If to get the selling price to be five hundred thirty two. You can clearly see a correction is required in whatever value I assumed. I'm doing the correction now. You can clearly see if I multiply by five, if I multiply this selling price by five, I'll get five thirty two. That means what? You can use this multiplier to correct all other values in between. That means what? Here hundred, I need to multiply it by five to correct it. I'm going to get five hundred. Let us move further. Question number nineteen. A shopkeeper increases the price of an object by forty percent and then sells it at twenty five percent discount on the mark price. If the selling price of such an object is given to be twenty one hundred, then what is the cost price of the shopkeeper? Essentially, you know, first thing what you you all need to understand here in this particular question, it is again, you know, the price is being raised by forty percent, and then you are giving twenty five percent discount. So you need not to worry about that. You have to just find that what is the net change, net profit, net gain, or net loss. So if anything is being having a price of hundred, if you increase it by forty percent, it will become hundred forty. And then what you are decreasing it by twenty five percent. So twenty five percent decrease on a number. Twenty five percent of any number is what one fourth of that number. Twenty five percent is one for one by four in fractions. 
So you just calculate what will be one fourth. It will be half will be 70, half of 70 will be 35. So you will say 35 minus what you are going to get will be 105. That simply means if I'm having any value which is having 100 cost price, the final price at which it is being sold, selling price will be 105. But in this question, selling price is given to be 2100. So there are two ways of doing it. You can clearly see from here. You just find the right multiplier. If you got this particular value to be 105, now you can clearly see that you just need to multiply this particular value by how much? You just need to multiply this particular value by 20. By multiplying by 20, you can get 2100. That means that correction is required here as well. You have to multiply the cost price by 20 and you are going to get 2000. The other way was, if this is 100 and this is 105, clearly this particular value is 5 percentage. This particular value is what? This particular value is going to be 5 percent. So you can write in this way also that if 105 percent is 2100, so what will be 100 percent? That is the cost price. You can again get 2000 easily without any problem. Question number 20. The mark price of an article is rupees 5000, but due to a special festive offer, a certain percent of discount is declared. Mr. X availed this opportunity and bought the article at reduced price. He then sold it at rupees 5000 and thereby made a profit of 11 1 by 9 percent. The percentage of discount allowed was. Now, the simple question, the idea of this question is very simple, right? It simply says that, you know, there is certain mark price, but a discount was there. So, Mr. X bought it at a reduced price. Then he sold it at 5000. That means, you know, there was certain price X and that certain price X was, you, you were given certain discount, right? So, you purchase it at a price of Y. Then again, what happened? You At an increment, you sold it at the value of X only. So, what is being asked that if this particular profit is 11, 1 by 9 percent, right? Then what was the discount here? It's a very well-known structure, very well-known structure that you, it, it's simply a question like that if x is 11 by 11 1 by 9 percent more than y then by what percent y is less than x that's the structure right that's what you're asking x is becoming x in between y so the structure is like this that if x is 11 1 by 9 percent more than y what they are asking what is the percentage discount here on a base of x what discount shall i give so that x becomes y what percentage i decrease so x becomes y Right, So, I just want to know by what percentage y is less than x. Going to be, you can call this particular fraction to be plus 1 by 9. You know, I have an article posted on my blog, AB rule. You can go through it and you can do such questions orally. The blog link is given in the description. You can just click on that and read what is AB rule. You will clearly do it orally. That is, this particular value is plus 1 by 9. This particular value will be minus 1 by 10 whenever the structure will be x, y, x, okay, minus 1 by 10 in fractions is nothing but 10 percent, 10 percent and 10 percent is directly given in option A and that becomes the right answer and thank you all for watching. If you find it useful, do share with your friends and do subscribe the channel for regular updates of any new uploads that is going to be done. Do comment, you know, how did you find this video? Are you getting benefited by the approach being discussed here? Thank you.